The voices of Jordanians roar in downtown Amman for the 10th Friday. Their demands, political reforms, tantamount to a constitutional monarchy and a review of King Abdullah's future role, a previously taboo subject. It is a fair demand because we seek a direction where the monarch does not rule, so that the government is held accountable, that the government has to be elected through a fairly elected parliament. The monarch should be above the authorities, just like the British, Belgian and Spanish. Spanish monarchies. This way, the government remains responsible towards the people and the parliament. They say they want the monarch to retain his position, acting as a unifying force and arbitrator between the Palestinian and Bedouin communities. But they say he would no longer be an absolute monarch, allowing Jordanians to elect their own governments. The government should be elected and should be given more authority. That's the basis of progress and growth. It is not possible to keep the royal palace in charge of everything. That palace can't shoulder all these responsibilities. Since 1952, the Jordanian constitution was amended 29 times to hand the monarch the sweeping executive powers he enjoys today. Now, Prime Minister Maruf al-Bakhit has made it clear that these calls for a constitutional monarchy are completely rejected by his government. Just before his government won a very close vote of confidence in parliament, Bakhit said a constitutional monarchy in Jordan was simply a non-starter. The government believes that the talk about a so-called constitutional monarchy at this point in time would affect the balance of Jordan's political system and constitution. This chatter is a violation of the constitution and it bypasses political reforms. That statement and the Prime Minister's attitude during the political standoff have only magnified the divisions in the country. The protesters remain determined that they will force wholesale change in Jordan. Nisreen al-Shamayli al-Jazeera, Amman.